Imogene and Pam, both 27 old dorm mates at small town Glendary College, have met up at their five-year reunion. Well, Imogen, you've been writing the annual class notes since we left college, so you know I'm still stuck in this hick town teaching high school art. A far cry from your exciting life, working for a publishing firm in New York City. The city might be exciting, but the job sure isn't. I'm just a gopher. I'm lucky if I get close enough to real manuscripts to spill coffee on them. How come your old roommate Sarah didn't come to the reunion? Too busy with her showbiz life to bother with us? Par for the course, I guess. Once a star, always a star. Don't be so hard on Sarah. She decided to take advantage of her joint drama and business degrees to start her own film production company in New York. She's offered me a job as a publicist, and I'm seriously considering it. Oh, honey, that's great. Aren't you glad now you had a high-powered roommate? She may have overwhelmed you at college with her campus fame, but somehow you're still friends now. Hey, here's an idea. Since you were an English major, it makes perfect sense. Why don't you write a screenplay for her company? Yeah, that's an idea. How about you and your old roommate Betty over there? Are you still close? Oh, sure, we hang out. Why not? We're both just ordinary, everyday teachers still nondescripts like we were at college. Remember when Betty gave us that nickname? Self-deprecating for sure, but that's how the popular kids regarded us. Pam, I'll let you in on a little secret. A secret? What is it? I'm already working on a screenplay for Sarah's company, A College Story, and its working title would be The Nondescripts. You gotta be kidding! You wanna write a movie about us? The nerdy kids at college? Have you told Sarah about this plan? Not yet, but I'm convinced it's a groundbreaking idea. Most people don't realize that so-called nondescripts like us make all kinds of things happen behind the scenes. They'd never guess how much power we acquired just by snooping around. I can't wait to tell Betty about your idea. Maybe we'll both try out for roles in your movie. In fact, we could play ourselves. Let's not jump the gun. I have to finish writing the thing first, and then convince Sarah to at least consider it. But anything's possible, right? I'll drink to that. Imogene has started her new job at Sarah's film production company. A copying machine dominates a side room. Sherry, mid-twenties, stylishly dressed, enters while Imogene is in the process of copying a document. Ugh, haven't you finished that copying I asked you to do? Not quite yet. It's a very large document. Could you please hurry up with it? Mr. Lewis and I need it for a conference call. I'm making the three copies you asked for. I can't ask the machine to go any faster. Maybe it would go a little faster if you weren't snooping. You were asked to copy it, not read it. I wasn't. I mean, so what if I glanced at it? I wasn't hired as a clerk, you know. In case you weren't clued in, I'm supposed to be a professional in this office, too. A publicist. In fact, not that I mind helping out with mundane tasks once in a while, but... In case you aren't clued in, I'm Mr. Lewis's first assistant. That makes me the deputy PR officer. And this document doesn't concern you. It's just charts and budgets and things like that. Oh, really? I thought I caught a glimpse of something else stuck in the middle of it. 
like a treatment or a screenplay. Like I said, it doesn't concern you. Just finish up the job. If you and Mr. Lewis are working on a screenplay, what's the big secret? Why are you trying to hide it? That's none of your business. I'm going back to Mr. Lewis's office. Just bring the copies in when they're ready. Imogene has requested a private meeting with Sarah in her office. She is seated opposite her new boss's executive desk. Well, Imogen, I hope you didn't request this meeting so soon to complain that you're not doing meaningful work. As I told you when I hired you, that will take time. Actually, Sarah, I didn't come in to complain about my work status. There's another matter I'd like to discuss. I thought you should be aware of something that might be going on, kind of secretly. I have reason to believe that Sherry and Mr. Lewis are up to something. You're telling me, but that's their personal business. Oh, oh, I don't mean that. What I mean is, I suspect that they might be working on a screenplay that the rest of us aren't supposed to know about. I know for sure that they went to a lot of trouble to conceal something in a thick budget document that they gave me to copy. Well, to be fair, this is a film production company. It wouldn't shock me to find out that all of my employees are secretly working on screenplays that they'd like me to produce. Honestly, aren't you doing a little discreet scribbling yourself? I saw you hide something in your desk drawer one time when I popped into your cubicle. Admit it. Okay, I do admit it. But I'm not doing it on office time, or at least when there's anything pressing in the office. And I'm not keeping it a secret. I'm telling you. Understood. I don't object to your freelancing a little if it doesn't interfere with your office work. In fact, all of my staff are welcome to try something on spec, as long as it's understood that the odds against it ever getting produced are pretty steep. It's the secrecy part that concerns me. Me too. Sherry claimed that they needed the document copied right away because they were on a conference call. Who could they have been talking to, I wonder? Some other production company? Maybe even some Hollywood connection they're trying to cultivate? <laughs> well, if those two have a Hollywood connection, I really need to know who it is and how they managed it. Maybe I could find out, sort of discreetly. Maybe just snoop around, keep an eye on them, try to discover what they're really up to. Snooping is kid stuff. I'd prefer you called it spying. That sounds more sophisticated for the workplace. Which reminds me, didn't you used to hang out with a group of girls at college who got their kicks from doing stuff like that? What was that name you gave yourselves? You mean the nondescripts? I... I didn't know you were aware of that. I read the alumni notes from time to time, believe it or not. You sent a shout-out to those old friends of yours just before the reunion. I'll admit we were a little devious at times, back in the day, but it was mostly innocent fun. I guess the worst thing we did was spread a silly rumor that shook up Christine O'Brien's romance with the football captain. And oh yeah, we did rig the vote for homecoming queen senior year to keep her from getting it. She was a total snob, if you'll remember. Yeah, but she was also a friend of mine, if I had known about those things then. But never mind, that's over and done with. I won't ask any more questions about your former life of crime, except that I'm thinking I shouldn't let your collegiate skills go to waste here in the real world. Especially if they could benefit me this time. Of course. Everything I do here will be for your benefit, always. You're my boss now, and I guess it wouldn't hurt to develop a new work skill, especially in a new job. Who knows, maybe an office spy today? 
can become a bona fide publicist tomorrow. You have my permission to work on both. Cool. I mean, I won't let you down. <laughs>